Well, thank you everyone for coming out and joining us on this beautiful summer evening. We have been having a pretty good summer so far, right? Yeah, yeah it's been awesome. And uh, today we're gathering to discuss project management and how can we deliver data science projects in success and create real world value on the budget and on time, which is a very exciting topic. And Cole, can you please go to the first slide? Uh, my name is Emma Liu. I'm a data scientist and a project man manager. And uh, now I work for IBM as uh, one of their project managers in their advanced analytics practice. Um, I've ha I have had seven years experience working on data science projects, delivering data science projects for different industries, including healthcare, fundraising, telecommunication, and uh, recently energy sector. Uh, since I have the stage now, I'm going to insert a quick advertisement. I'm also the co-organizer of PyData Calgary Meetup, so um, if you're interested, check us out. Uh, our next meetup should be sometime in August, and uh, if you just Google PyData Calgary, uh, we will come up. So uh, actually, Cole, can you please go back to the previous slide? Um, so as mentioned, during the years of uh, time delivering data science projects, I've worked for data science uh, teams uh, of different sizes. So ranging from me being the only data scientist trying to deliver a project to a small team of three data scientists where we uh, took, turn, took turns to wear different uh, roles in terms of project manager, uh, data scientists, data engineers, and software developers, uh, to recently when I joined IBM, where I work with a big team of data scientists, software developers, and uh, engineers to try to deliver various data science projects to our clients. And uh, from a project or use case point of view, uh, data science projects come in different sizes and complexities. Some of them, you, you have your traditional predictive analytics projects, some of them are more complex, requires multiple modules and sub-modules of, of models in order to achieve the business objective. So, Cole, can you please go to the next slide? Thank you. Um, I want to point out, point out a few key messages or key takeaways from this uh, presentation. The first one being the uncertain and research nature of data science projects is something that most people know and almost everyone agrees, but I think to put things into perspective in terms of how that, imp how that uh, impact delivery of data science projects from a project management point of view, it's important to know the implication of having a project is uncertain in nature. And uh, I also wanted to talk about a delivery approach that will help us increase the likelihood of successful delivery, that is delivery, that is discovery, then implement, or discovery, then execute. And then I wanna talk about iterative execution and refinement of uh, during the development phase of the project and develop with deployment in mind and how to proper manage, manage stakeholder and how to proper set expectations. So first of all, I wanna talk about the uncertain and research nature of data science projects. The uncertainty or the research nature come from three aspects and data science projects being a scientific projects and data scientists being scientists. Uh, we can see that how some of that uh, research or uncertainty can come into play uh, when you deliver a project. So the first layer of uncertainty come from being able to define the what. So most of the times our business or clients, they know what they wanna achieve. I wanna increase revenue, I wanna reduce cost, I wanna become more efficient. But then be able to articulate, articulate that clearly in a way that you can frame that into a model is actually challenging at times. And sometimes you do realize once you start coding, start building models, you have to revisit and then sometimes um, modify your original scope or original objectives. The second layer of the uncertainty coming from how. So usually once we have a problem we wanna solve, an objective we wanna achieve, there's no crystal clear path to achieve that goal. Unless you have solved the exact same problem with the exact same data, which never happens, there's gonna be some uncertainty built into the how, what kind of algorithm or model that we can build in order to achieve our business objectives. And of course, data come in all different kind of shape and size and level of quality. So different projects and different organizations, different departments may bring in uncertainty from a data perspective. So with all that, how can we 
and with a limited budget and time, how can we ensure that we can deliver value from data science projects? How can we manage this, the uncertainty in a way that um, we can see value earlier and be able to arrive there quicker? So I think a lot of you probably are familiar with the famous, uh, famous CRISP DM delivery approach. Uh, how many of you have seen or are familiar with this delivery approach of machine learning projects? Awesome, so uh, CRISP-DM is widely used in delivering machine learning projects and uh, it is designed specifically for tackling the uncertain nature of data science projects. As you can see here, we have a loop and uh, it consists of several steps, business understanding, data understanding, data preparation, modeling, evaluation, and deployment. It's all around data, of course. And we can see a lot of the arrows going back and forth indicating the iterative process of, of development and uh, and uh, scoping. So, Ko, if you can click, uh, what is, um, for business understanding and uh, data understanding, you can essentially just group them as discovery. In this stage, you're trying to understand the data you have, and also more importantly, trying to understand the business problem you're set to solve. The more detail you can get to in terms of framing the problem and uh, investigating the approach you can apply to solve this problem, investigating the quality of data that you can work with, the better, that because you are mitigating the risk and mitigating the uncertainty at the beginning of the project. So it's very important to be able to conduct discovery, uh, which is business understanding and data understanding, correctly. And uh, you can essentially group the data preparation, modeling, and evaluation all into the development phase. So at this phase, you already have a pretty good idea in terms of the things you wanna try, the algorithm you're gonna develop and apply, and uh, also you have a metric you wanna optimize and work towards too, no matter is increase some sort of revenue or reduce some sort of cost. And uh, the last step, obviously, is deployment. That's when you have a solution, you have a model that you think is, is satisfactory in performance and you, you have confirmed that it actually achieves your business objective and that's when you deploy the solution and you start to realize value. Um, and a lot of times we stop at the development phase and do not go into deployment for whatever reason. Uh, I wanna point out that deployment is the place where you realize value. Without deployment, without start using solution you build, it's all just a hobby. It's not something that is actually valuable for the business. So I wanna talk about discovery phase. So that's my second key message, which is discovery is key here. We're trying to reduce the uncertainty as much as possible and uh, you know, reduce the risk. So as mentioned, the purpose of discovery work is really to around scoping. Scoping is important and, and more often than not, we don't spend enough time scope out data science projects. Because essentially, you can model the entire universe and you can model to the granularity of each item, but uh, it's not feasible given that we have a very clear goal we wanna achieve and we do have limited resources. So it's important to uh, carry out a proper scoping phase to understand what is the business problem, to, have a, to articulate a statement and to understand what data we have to work with. And that, that's, that will in turn inform the approach that we can use. So after researching the existing approaches or brainstorm potential approaches that we can apply in solving the problem, we also revisit the data available to us. Then we revisit the business value we're bringing with all three components together trying to determine a plan that is, that is gonna guide us through the development or execution phase of the project. Okay, so, uh, sorry, Cole, can we please go back to that uh, list of output from discovery work? So this is the golden list that we always refer to. By the end of the discovery phase, we should have had most, if not all of those items, you know, uh, explained or articulated. So we can see that the business problem and uh, a certain type of objective or KPI that we're trying to, you know, optimize. Um, is it, are we building a decision making tool in a sense that it's gonna automate a lot of decision and processes or are we building a decision support, decision augmentation tool in a sense that we're, we're trying to support decision making in a complex human decision making process. And all this gonna, is gonna have impact on how we design our solution. From a technical point of view, design point of view, we, we need to assess the data available to us and uh, uh, 
approaches or methods that we can apply, uh, and uh, also conducts you know exploration analysis to see the correlation between the data we have and the objective that we're trying to achieve. If we're lucky, we'll be able to establish some sort of technical metric or data-driven metric that we can work towards to optimize uh, that will closely mimic the business objective we're trying to achieve here. But in some cases, it's hard to actually define a technical metric that uh, will be able to closely mimic your business objective. In that case, we just have to use a sort of proxy to approximate the ultimate goal. And I will give an example on that in, at the later half of the presentation. So as you can see that with the desired list of, uh, of uh, artifacts coming from the discovery work, it involves multiple groups of stakeholders. So I want to spend a minute talking about different groups of people working together in a data science project. So you, first you have your business team or product owner. This is your end user, your customer success people, uh, your business units, um, and uh, the objective of the business team is really to communicate and confirm the objective of a data science project, working with the data scientists closely to make sure that the solution that the data scientists are building will actually achieve the business outcome or business objective. I myself, as a product manager of a data science team, would consider myself partially fall into that group. Okay, and uh, for the data science team uh, and the engineering and the solution architecture team, you have a group of technical uh, team members. And sometimes this, these are all separate individuals. You have your data, data scientists and data engineers, software developers. And in some cases, it is actually one individual wearing all these different hats and carrying out different tasks. Um, this is what we refer to as the full stack data scientist or a unicorn data scientist. I'm looking at uh, my colleague there, uh, who is actually capable of carrying out being a unicorn data scientist and carry out all different tasks for different projects. Uh, to point out that if you only have one person wearing all these hats in a project, you do have to plan the timeline accordingly because it's gonna take one person much longer to alternate among different tasks and be able to carry, them all, carry out them all. Yeah, so uh, from a delivery point of view, we've already talked about discovery, which is some people call scoping or research, or sometimes we call the scoping as pre-discovery, pre but they're all discovery. And uh, uh, if we can see that it's a, a project always comes from a product needs or a business needs coming from the business team. Uh, in terms of, give an example, uh, we would like to extend the run life of our equipment from two years to five years. So that would be a need coming from the business side. Now the data science team will take the lead and uh, work together with the business team and also the technical team, the data engineers and software developers to have an initial brainstorming session, basically to talk about what are the potential solutions we can use in order to extend run life from two years to five years. And uh, we, they will discover, data scientists, scientists would then discover what data we have available to support that. Do we have production data? Do we have failure data? Do we have sensor data to help us understand more the operations around the problem we're trying to solve? And then together with the business team, they come, come together with a problem statement or scope and objectives together. So it could be something like we're trying to, we're gonna build a AI or data science solution to predict the remaining run life and the failure likelihood and then recommend the best course of action. So that could be a problem statement in that case. Um, it's important that the data engineering and the solution architecture team start their data preparation and building out the pipeline earlier because this is a step where it usually take longer than expected. Uh, it requires sometimes pulling uh, data from the production system of the organization, uh, sometimes requires data aggregation or uh, pulling flat files, normalize them into a table format. So a lot of work actually happened here. So it's better to you know, start as early as possible so that when we go to the second phase, the research phase, where data scientists are ready to get their hands dirty with data, they can go right ahead. And uh, with this research phase, we are going deeper in terms of what are the algorithms we can use to solve this problem. If we were to design a model pipeline that does prediction and you know, recommendation sequentially at the same time, what should be the model that we can build for each module? 
And do we have data to support that? If we're gonna recommend the best course of action, what is the superset of actions that we can actually recommend from? Is it gonna be a operational thing or is it gonna be a maintenance thing? So it's all dictated by the data available there. So both of these steps actually belong to discovery. So at end of discovery, hopefully, we have a really good idea in terms of the algorithms we're gonna try out or develop and uh, the problem statement in terms of what are the expected out outcome or output. And uh, we also have an idea of uh, if the data is enough to support us. So of course, uh, once we're ready, we're just gonna keep moving on in terms of the phases of the project, but sometimes, sometimes we do discover we don't have a good solution um, or we don't have enough data to achieve whatever scope that we're, try we're trying to achieve. So it is time to go back and revisit and be able to you know, modify our scope accordingly. Then we go into development. So this is where all the fun start, where data scientists try out different algorithms and or build their own custom algorithms. And uh, if, if you're lucky, you have a set of technical evaluation metrics that you can keep optimizing to. Like in supervised learning, you have your accuracy metric you can optimize to. Uh, if it's a clustering methods, then you probably have to go back to, your, to the business user to gather feedback. How do you feel about the output that we're generating? And do that iteratively until we achieve a certain level of satisfaction. I wanna emphasize here that sometimes in the earliest cases of the project, we say, oh, we wanna achieve 90% of the accuracy before we deploy. And uh, soon we'll realize that, oh, going from 50 to 70% took one week, but going from 70% to 90% is probably gonna take us two years. In that case, we would really recommend that we evaluate the case again, look hard and closely at the problem, more often than not, having a 60%, 70% accuracy is already better than nothing, better, better than not having the data science project at all. It's a trade-off between do you wanna deploy and start the value generation now, or do you wanna keep researching for another two years to achieve a better accuracy? So if we go to the deployment side of things, we really encourage that we get there as fast as possible because when we get there, we will be able to get more insights from the field by using it and also be leveraging the power of data science and AI already. And of course, once we start collecting feedback and, and performance metrics from, from the field, we may revisit our model, realizing that we need to tune our model or we may need an entirely different approach. So that's why it's important to recognize in a data science project there's a good likelihood for you know, going backwards. The important thing is that we should be able to define value and design deliverables at different stages of the project. We don't have to wait until the very end to see value. For example, from data exploration, we're already doing correlation analysis, exploration and analysis that is gonna show interesting insights. Uh, from the model development phase, we're already trying different algorithms and getting familiar with the data, we should be able to see value from there as well. It's important to be able to recognize and quantify incremental business value we're generating from a project. Okay. So next, I wanna quickly go through two use case examples, one uh, in the service sector and the other in the uh, upstream oil and gas industry to showcase how we define those metrics and objectives in discovery phase and carry out development and execution. The first example, we're looking at the business problem is pretty straightforward. Uh, the company has a set of database of existing customers and uh, they're trying to identify within these database, millions of customers, which ones are good candidates for cross-sell, upsell, and uh, which ones will essentially generate the most value, value for the company. Currently, the, the uh, sales team, they would manually go into the database and then use whatever metric that they think is important. For example, uh, whoever spent more than 200 bucks in the last three months, they're gonna pull a list of those prospects and then you know, start sending them emails of offers, advertisements, or start calling them. Now, so as part of the discovery phase, we need to really define that in clear user story. For example, with this AI solution we're building, Instead of coming up with leads just based on intuition, user now go to uh, this you know, envisioned solution or tool to automatically generate prospect lists for different kinds of sales initiatives. So that's our goal there. And uh, we have a set of technical objectives, which is things like 
be able to correctly identify prospects 80% of the time and uh, be able to achieve more than 40% conversion rate. Um, and we have a really good idea of the modeling approach we're gonna use. We're gonna use a set of super, supervised learning algorithms to predict who are more, more likely to become a customer and use a set of segmentation algorithm to, to describe the segmentation and uh, match them up to a certain offer or sales initiative. So this is a perfect example where we actually are lucky enough to have a technical metric that we can work towards to and they actually mimic very closely the business objective we're trying to achieve here. The next example is a uh, use case where, that we worked with the uh, upstream oil and gas company where we're looking at automating or providing decision support for well review processes. I don't know how many of you are familiar with well review processes. Essentially, uh, when oil and gas companies have thousands of wells that uh, they have on their portfolio, they're all, they often try to make the decision, should they reactivate those shut-in wells? Should they just abandon those wells? It all depends on the production, producing potential of that well. And uh, developing engineers and geologists, they work together to review each well and then give an estimation of how much producing potential there is. It's actually a very time-consuming manual process because they have to you know, manually assess multiple data sources and uh, make a decision. So in this project, we're set out to uh, provide support to that very complex decision and review process. And the goal here, the business objective or value, uh, lies in being able to review faster. So imagine now you need a team of five uh, experts to, to review 50 wells and then it's gonna give you 10 recommendations in two days. We're looking to uh, have an estimation for all the wells, thousands of wells they have in their portfolio and be able to give an estimation for all the wells they have so that engineers can just take that, prioritize and review from there. And hopefully with that, in a combination of uh, AI, data science and engineers, we'll be able to achieve higher success rate in their reactivation, abandonment decision making. So what's the difference of this use case compared to the last one? The biggest in difference between this one and the previous one is that here our, our goal is to be able to give an estimate for reserves, which is how much oil they have left down there. And uh, there's no ground truth label for how much reserve we have for a certain well, for a certain region. And uh, data is limited in terms of how can we evaluate how good or how bad our model is performing uh, in a sense that to achieve our set business goals. So as you can see from the technical objective here, instead of having a hard like 80% accuracy measure here, we actually have to settle with a much softer objective to say we're looking to significantly reduce the time spent manually finding those candidates. Uh, we're, look, we're, we're setting the goal to be able to increase reactivation success by a combination of having the tools supporting the experts to make a decision. So it's kind of like a X-ray geologist supporting AI supporting tool where the AI is not making a decision but we're providing the information insights for the geologist to be, for the uh, oncologist or doctors to be able to make a decision faster and more accurately. So it's a decision augmentation tool instead of decision making tool. And we have a set of you know, solution approach, as we can see here, is actually multiple modules and involves a number of customized algorithms instead of just you, you know, those ones that you can pull from Python packages. So all those information is gonna guide us, have an idea of how long and how much effort is gonna go into delivering these projects. So next, I wanna talk about uh, some of the learning from experience. Uh, before I go there, any questions at this point? Yes. So, um, you, you did the SQL queries. Yes. And um, the customers had accepted the results. I guess they were happy. Now, have you closed the loop for the second case? Uh, what I mean by closing the loop is yeah. to monitor actually all the, the Yeah, absolutely. So the question is, in the second case where we have a more complex 
uh, solution to build, and uh, have we get have we gotten to a point where we can evaluate the performance in uh, in the field and you know. Uh, be able to quantify the value we've generated so far. So, so far we've conducted, we've built the solution and we've conducted, uh, Cole, if you can go back to the this slide with the uh, steps. Yeah, so currently we're at uh, the iterative development and gathering feedback from the subject matter experts. So we, we've shared multiple iterations of results from, with the geologists and engineers and uh, partially realized the value that this tool is helpful for for them to make decisions faster. And our next step is actually quickly coming to going to the deploy the, the solution, providing the solution, making recommendation, and actually go to the field to see that if we can realize the another lever, which is increase the success rate of well reactivation. So we've given the two value levers we're looking at, where we're realizing partially of that, and then we're getting to the next stage, next stage of uh, field trial. Yeah, so it's about collaboration and uh, also setting expectations. So in, in the case that you have business units, no matter it's ex external clients or internal clients, you do have the clients to, to work with. It's important to carry them along the process and uh, explain to them the solution we're building. Try to avoid the case where, where the team is has down developing and not communicating with the, the business. It adds the risk of the things we're building is actually not meeting the requirements or for them not to understanding the, the effort and uh, thinking process that goes into the solution design. And then it's important to be able to showcase value that uh, to show that even though we're only achieving 70% accuracy, we're still bringing this much value to the business, right? It's gonna be less than 90% for sure, but it's gonna be much better than not deploying, not having the model at all. And then we should be able to park or bank those improvement uh, for future iteration and future versions. It must, it, it must be very difficult though at, at the outset to give them a number on what it's gonna cost to do this. So how do you sell a project like that? So, yeah. You don't know how many models you're gonna have to build. That's right, so it's actually, we rely a lot on data scientist experience. So um, this is where experience comes in, that a very experienced data scientist can actually give you a ballpark in terms of, oh, this solution is gonna likely involve three things. Two of them is gonna be customized that we don't have a solution available. So this is, that's why you should be looking at six months of development time versus this is very straightforward. You can just pull a package, you can just do some data cleaning, it's gonna be like two months type of work. So we rely a lot uh, on the experience from our you know, senior data scientists and the lead data scientists. Yes. So if we talk about uh, wells and stuff like that, do you take care of 2D modeling and have to determine how deep the wells are and if there are different pools and zones and stuff to, yeah. to determine whether it's worth it, you know, recovering that well? Yeah, absolutely. So Cole can probably talk in de more in detail on that. We do, we do take into consideration understanding the geology there, what formations do we have, uh, what pools do we have, and then you know, build decline models or whatever models that based on, engine, uh, based on petrophysics in terms of uh, uh, estimating a, the ultimate recovery rate from there. So we do have those separate modules. Uh, Cole, if you can go back to the well review. So we have, you know, semi-supervised learning algorithm that does the geology understanding of formation and pools. And we have um, analogous well identification, you know, using well similarity data to, to interpret those well logs and uh, distance between analogous wells and target wells to, you know, determine which wells are analogous to each other. And then carry out decline analysis to give an EUR estimate. So it is very customized and uh, with a lot of inputs from engineers and geologists. So it's not just your typical black box data science project that you can pull from a Python package. It actually has a lot of customized uh, algorithm built into that. Yes. Yeah. 
So it depends. Um, yes, the question is that uh, these two use cases are completely different use cases, and uh, as we all know that data scientists, they require a lot of input from subject, subject matter expertise and domain expertise. Uh, how do we ensure that we have all those kind of skill sets and expertise on team in order to deliver so different projects and use cases? So um, at IBM, we work because most of our projects, a lot of the case is in energy and oil and gas sector, and we have a group of uh, team members. They belong to the Natural Resource Solution Center. So these are the engineers and or previous engineers and uh, geologists that uh, now is part of the IBM team. We work closely with them to you know pick their brain on how the process works, the pools and the formation of that, and how data scientists can design the solution accordingly. And uh, if it happens that we, when we carry out a project, we don't have subject matter expertise on our team. That is when we need to engage the client early and say that we need some time uh, in order to, especially in the discovery and design phase of the project. So it's important to, when we set up the project, to involve those resources early. Okay, so Chloe, if you can go to the last slide, we actually we touched on a lot of the uh, lessons learned or best practice already. Uh, as a product manager in um, data science, we do value the importance of initial plan. You need to have an initial plan, but we should be prepared that the plan will change. I, I don't want to say 100% of the time, but 100% of the time. And uh, we want to be able to uh, work to gain commitment with the, with the stakeholders, as mentioned, working closely with the business team, explain the solution we're building, uh, be able to evaluate the value, incremental value throughout the project. And uh, of course, the value in use, try to get to start using the solution as soon as possible, and uh, have value in learning, again, trying to you know, articulate and quantify value as we go, as we carry out this uh, stage process. Uh, ensure alignment with the business processes. This is very important. We don't want to have the data scientists you know, work very hard to develop a solution to realize that, hey, because of the limitation or constraints from the business processes, we won't be able to integrate. We won't be able to actually make use of the solution. Uh, this kind of thing should be ironed out at the early stage of the project. Intelligent experimentation design. So this is important. For example, we, we want to seek feedback from the SMEs and carry out intelligent experimentations to actually see prove the point that with this AI solution we're building, we're saving them time or we're seeing better results. So it requires A-B testing would be one experimentation design. Uh, most of the times in oil and gas industries, we don't have the luxury of conducting rigorous A-B testing, but we should try as much as possible to carry out smart and rigorous exper experimentation to pr prove value. And uh, develop with deployment in mind. I know in data science project, data scientists need to experiment very quickly. Uh, usually is you have your Jupyter notebook and then you do a bunch of code with in hundreds of cells and then only you can understand the code that, that you've written. Um, and uh, it actually ties to the last point code as well. If we can go to the work in partnership with your technical team, meaning software developers, uh, solution architects, your information technology departments, to always think about deployment when you are developing or experimenting. And uh, because very likely, unless you're working with a company like IBM where we, we have you know, uh, team members focusing on deployment and all that, if you are in a smaller team, you may be the data scientists who are responsible for deploying and maintaining a production model. You don't, you don't wanna be in a scenario where you are troubleshooting a function <laughs> after function production solution at 2 a.m. in the morning and being the only data scientist working on that because the code is not uh, designed in a way that is uh, easily maintainable. And I may or may not be speaking from experience here. Okay, so that actually concludes the things I wanna to share today. And Cole, if you wanna to go to the last slide, any questions? I think we've answered all the questions so far. Yes.
guess you, you will uh, move away from, from this department. So once you deliver, right, the, the organization that would do that uh, on their own yeah. uh, and keep supervising the, the model and keep updating the, the, the machines and so on. So uh, how are you planning to, to do that? Yeah, so actually there are two questions here, right? So one thing is more on change management. So um, how can we make sure that uh, our tool essentially gets used and there's no you know, pushbacks from the users or the business in terms of adopting the tool? So that's why it's important to involve them early and actually start working with the end users already when we're developing. So it's a co-development process and then that way you get more commitment from them. Um, the second, actually, question is on um, how are they going to maintain that if it's a consulting project, then if we just leave the project after we deploy, how the company or the client is going to maintain that. It depends on the setup. In some cases, we actually continue, we provide the service of continuing maintaining, monitoring the performance and uh, tuning the model ongoing as we go as a service, right? Uh, or alternatively, if the client has a team, an in-house team that is capable of, you know, maintaining the, the solution, then we just, you know, uh, deliver that to them and document everything and make sure that they have the capability of keep the model refreshed and monitoring the performance and then we'll leave it there. So it depends on the setup of the client. All right. Well, thank you.